love of God, how rich and pure, how measureless and strong. It shall forevermore endure the saints and angels' song. The love of God. I hope with God's help to preach on the love of God the next few weeks. February is always the love month here at Temple Baptist Church. And you know, I, I can't understand why if it is the greatest gift of all, love is the greatest gift, am I right? I mean, hope is going to end in sight when we see Jesus. We won't need hope anymore. It's not an eternal gift. It's only while we're here we need hope. Faith will end in sight when we see Jesus. We won't need faith then. It's faith that helps us to overcome the world while we're here in this sinful world. But when we get on the other side where there is no sin, we won't need faith anymore. But the love of God, it's eternal. It's the greatest gift. We're going to be having a Valentine's banquet. We're going to be having uh, different things uh, planned for you uh, for this month. And, and we just want to enjoy the love of God. We want to talk about it. We want to uh, understand it a little bit more, the, the height and the depth and the width of God's love. To comprehend with all the saints, the scripture says, Ephesians 3, 18. I don't think we scratch the surface of this great gift of love is what I'm trying to say. One of the names of God is Jehovah Nissi. It means exactly in the Hebrew what is written in the English for us in this verse. His banner over me was love. His banner, okay, his flag, his ensign, uh, his banner. The very thing that characterizes our God more than anything else is his love toward us. Isn't that good? And when he brings us into the banqueting table, one day he's going to do that. Have you ever seen that uh, table that just goes out into infinitum? And uh, it just looks like it goes into eternity. And it's just set beautifully. It's got all these gold uh, uh, dishes and, and uh, glasses already set. Have you all ever seen that picture? It's a beautiful picture about the eternal love of our God. All of us will be seated down. We're already seated in heavenly places in Christ Jesus, but one day we'll be seated down, and uh, Job and uh, the Old Testament saints are not going to be serving us. They're going to be participating with us. Amen. They're already there from what we can gather in the scripture. But the Lord's coming after us, and he's coming after us real soon. Amen. I mean very soon. Soon and very soon we're going to meet the king. The King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. He's going to come riding on that white horse one of these mornings. We're going to be caught up to be with him in the air, and so shall we ever be with the Lord. We're supposed to comfort one another with, with these words. I don't know of any more, anything more comforting or anything uh, more loving to think that God would not leave us here comfortless. That cheers my heart this morning. I don't know about you. But uh, just to think, he's coming for his saints in the rapture, all right? He's coming with his saints, meaning that we're going to be following him on those white horses. Can somebody say amen? amen? There's a white stallion picked out just for you and me. Anybody like riding horses beside myself? I love it, don't you? And to think, hey, you know what? Uh, we won't need an automobile. I don't know if they'll have wings. I'm sure they will uh, because we're going to be flying with him back off into uh, eternity. Wonderful. You say, preacher, you really believe all that? I do. It would be a good day when you start believing the Bible. I mean all of it. Am I right? Why? Because his banner over us is love. Wherever God is and wherever his son is, one day we'll be there with him. We're separated for some time now. We have his Holy Spirit down here in the world today, and it's comforting our hearts. I mean, it's the paraclete. It's the great comforter. Uh, it teaches us and it guides us. The, the Holy Spirit does, and it leads us into all truth, uh, the Scripture says. But it's amazing to me how that something is unholy as we are. We think wrong, say wrong, do wrong. For all of sin and come short of the glory of God, right? Amen. How we could be invited into the very presence of of holiness. Holiness personified. God himself. We've been invited to that great day. That great coronation day. When our Lord Jesus Christ will be king of kings. He's just the prince of glory right now. But that great coronation day. He will be reigning king of kings. And lord of lords. Somebody ought to say amen. Woo! What an amazing thought. 
I, during these cold days, I'm sure you experienced the same thing I did. We had more time with our family and more time to think about the love of God. I hope you think about the love of God more each day to think about his goodness, to think about how much he loves us. Amen. Number one this morning in this message on his banner over me is love. The standard that best describes the character of God is love. I want you to write that down somewhere. The standard or the banner or the flag or the ensign. If God was flying a flag this morning, it would, it would absolutely without any doubt be God is love because that's his nature, isn't it? God is love. So this banner, this banner we're talking about, this, this flag is flying uh, over the throne room of God this morning. His banner is love. One day we're going to be invited into that very presence of God. Woo! Have you ever wondered about this? Have you ever considered uh, this supernatural gift of God? Wow. I'm thinking about faith. Is needed here, I said before, in 1 John 5 and 4, faith is the victory that overcomes the world. It overcomes the world, the worldly system, the cosmos, the sinful place that we're living down here. This is where we're at now, but can I tell you, at best, we're still in a, we're still in a sin-cursed world. Can you imagine a place where there is no sin? Never will be any sin, never has been any sin. Not one sin will slip under the door of heaven. That's why you've got to get your sins paid for and washed in the blood of Jesus Christ. What can wash away my sin? I think we sung it this morning. Nothing but the blood of Jesus. I get a little bit perturbed at these people who say it was the death of Christ alone that paid for my sin. That blood, it didn't have anything to do with the blood. Well, the Bible says, we go with what the Bible says here. Hebrews 9.22, without the shedding of blood, there's no remission of sins. So it did take the shedding of Jesus' pure and perfect blood uh, the spotless Lamb of glory. Did not John the Baptist say himself? He said, Behold the Lamb of God, which taketh away the sin of the world. Had to be without blemish, without spot. And here he comes. Here comes Jesus with his grace again, just about the time I needed. I mean, he came into this world just exactly on time when the Father wanted him to come. It was an awful world back then. It's becoming an awful world today. What would we do without Jesus Christ? So the very standard that best describes the character of God is his love. This eternal agape love is going to continue throughout all of eternity. It's what uh, binds us together. It's what unifies us. The Bible says, by this shall all men know that you're my disciples if you have this kind of love. This unconditional love for one another. You know you've passed from death into life, the scripture says, 1 John 3 and 14. Because you love the brethren. You like hanging out at the church of Jesus Christ? This is where the brethren are. Is this, is this a chore for you? Is this grievous for you that you have to come and spend a couple hours at church? No, sir, not for children of God. This is where we want to be. This is why we're here this morning. We're happily serving our Lord. But uh, really and truly, we're not here to serve. We're here to worship. We leave these doors every Sunday to serve the Lord. Amen? This is just the gravy on top. If you think Sunday is some hardship on you, you've got the wrong idea about worshiping the Lord. This is when we come together and praise God and shout and say, praise the Lord. Time out from the world and, and, and praise the Lord for his goodness. And sing songs like we've heard this morning. I tell you what, I got elevated a few more notches up on the ladder of God's love this morning. I felt like Jacob climbing that ladder up into heaven. Amen. <laughs> Have you ever read that portion of the scriptures? How many is going through the Bible this year with pastor? How many is reading through? It's wonderful, isn't it? I tell you what, it'll change your life. We're going to be having a guest uh, preacher not too long. His name is Dr. Tom Wallace. He said, I'm 83 years old preacher. And he said, I thought I'd do something different this year. He read through the Bible in one month. He's already done it. He said, after all these years, reading hundreds of times through the scriptures already, he said, after about 60 years of preaching, he said, it's the greatest year of my life. He has a hunger. Blessed are they which hunger and thirst for righteousness. He has an insatiable appetite to read and to study and to learn the word of God. 
I hope it don't take you that long to have that kind of love for God. See, this Bible is his love letter, talking about the love of God. How do we get the love of God? How do we learn about it more uh, perfectly? We do so by studying to show ourselves approved unto God. Workman that needeth not to be ashamed, but rightly dividing the word of truth. We preach the truth in love. Amen. The scripture says about the love of God that the love of God constrains us. It pushes us. It motivates us. It encourages us. It keeps us going. Second Corinthians 5.14. It's the very thing. The very essence of God is living inside your heart. The love of God. You can't explain it. You can't put it into words. You can't describe it. <laughs> you can't define it. But you know that you know that your sins are forgiven. Are you perfect? No. A thousand times no. But you know that something's different since Jesus moved into your life. Amen. Yeah. Praise the Lord. So we see the standard that best describes the character of our Lord. When we receive the love of God, we exercise our faith and we hope in what Christ did on the cross of Calvary to pay the sin penalty that we would have to pay. Somebody has to pay for our sin. It's going to be you. You're going to pay for your sins or you're going to let Jesus pay for your sin. Which is it? If you'll do the smart thing this morning, you'll receive the love of God and you'll have a home in heaven one day waiting for you. It's very simple, isn't it? It's either you receive it or you reject it. To reject it means to slap God in the face and say, His son uh, is not sufficient to pay for your sins. I think I'll take my chances. You ever heard anybody say that? That's foolish. I'll take my chances. Secondly, this morning, the banner flying at the banqueting house is love. Woo! That's all we're going to hear. I mean, it's not this lovey-dovey, kissy-kissy, smoochy-smoochy, huggy-huggy kind of love with people with a knife in their hand and going in your back at the same time they're hugging on you. That's not the kind of love we're talking about this morning. We're talking about a friend is a friend at all times. We're talking about, you know, God knew all about us and he still loved us. He looked beyond our fault. He saw us in our need and he still loves us in spite of who we are and what we've done. But we have a great God. I wish I could describe it a little bit better and clearer this morning. My head's kind of in the fog. If I didn't shake your hand this morning, let me explain something to you. I had 101 fever last night. I'm here. I probably have a low-grade fever right now, but I didn't want to get around you. I don't want anybody to go through what I... Brother Joe and I was talking up here on the stage. He said, it's awful, isn't it, preacher? I had the same thing. It's terrible. Wasn't it awful? Can you imagine no more pain, no more suffering, no more sorrow, brother? Amen, brother Bobby. <laughs> We're going to a place where we won't have those pains anymore. Woo! We're going to a place where we won't have sickness and ill health anymore. You ought to think about the love of God a little bit more. You ought to think about heaven and how beautiful heaven must be. Sweet home of the happy and free. Fair haven of rest for the weary. How beautiful heaven must be. I know when I'm weak, he is strong. How about you? Amen. Oh, listen, <laughs> I think I'll just get happy. Hey, we praise God in the good days. Can we praise him in the bad days? On your worst day, you ought to be able to praise God and rejoice that your name is written in the book of heaven. My name's written there on the page wide and fair in the book of God's kingdom. My name's written there. Yours is too if you've been saved. Wow. Hey, it's going to be his love. That's what's going to characterize everything about heaven. It's all going to be about heaven. Don't you love it when we think about love? Don't you love this time of the year when we think about uh, love and we talk about it and we uh, have banquets and all those type of things? But our final abode, look, our marriage to him, we are the bride, he is the groom, that, that event is going to be unlike anything, any marriage you've ever been to. I love going to these marriages. I used to not like to go, but I, the older I get, the more I like to participate in marriages. It's a type of the marriage supper of the Lamb. It's a type, that white dress, when you see that bride coming down the aisle, it's a type of the purity of the bride. And when she is brought down here and given to her bride, given to her husband, uh, this symbolizes what Jesus is going to do one day. Amen. We're going to be married to Jesus. See, the Bible talks about marriage in heaven. He said uh, there will be no marriage or given in marriage in heaven. You know why we will not need a mate in heaven? Because the love of God, again, 
is so far superior over any love that we have on earth, we'll not need an earthly love, a human love. We'll have godly love. <laughs> Supersedes all of man's love, doesn't it? And so we receive the love of God. Freely you receive, freely give. God wants us to love others as he's loved us. The same sacrifice that he bestowed upon us by giving. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. That whosoever believeth in him should not perish but have everlasting life. That kind of love, my friend, that never fails. 1 Corinthians chapter number 13 talks about the love of God. And one of the characteristics of that love is that love never fails. You're having problems in your marriage. Something's wrong with your spiritual life with God. Every problem that we face here in this world, we can go back to a spiritual problem in our life. We must get our heart right with God if we're going to be right with others. You living on separate ends of the house with your mate? <laughs> Maybe you needed this message on the love of God this morning. How in the world, if we call ourselves Christians, we call ourselves having and being able to have the love of God in our heart. We're recipients of the grace and love of God, but yet we can't get along with our own mate. The Bible says your prayers are hindered. We need revival from the pulpit to the pew. Amen. Let's have revival in our homes. You know why we can't have revival in the church? Because our home life is not what it ought to be. And th this is not in the notes. I don't know how it came up. It's hard to talk about the love of God and not talk about the love we have for one another down here. It sure is. Did you know one of the greatest things that we can do as God's people? There is forgiveness with the Lord. If the Lord has forgiven us, you say, Preacher, you don't understand what they've done to me and how they've mistreated me and how they've mishandled me and they, they don't respect me anymore. We don't have any trust anymore. Well, there's a spiritual problem. I suggest you, if you've got marriage problems, here's my suggestion to you. Every time that door squeaks back there, you ought to be walking through it. And the best insurance plan, you're going to hate me for saying this on a love message, but the very best insurance policy you can give your marriage is tithing of all of your increase. He said he would destroy the works of our adversary if we do that one thing. When he sees the devil coming and he's trying to destroy our marriage, guess what? God says, halt! Don't go any further. Amen. Let's keep this church strong by keeping our love relations strong with the Lord. Amen? Amen. Praise God. And where our treasure is, there will our heart be also. I have to throw that in there. You see, the opposite is true. To those who grew up in a warm Christ-like life and home, home life where God was first and everything last, think about this. Have you ever met someone uh, who never had that opportunity? talking about but found the love of God somehow some way somehow God found them by the way we didn't go looking for the Lord he came looking for us oh yeah he said he left the 99 and went looking for the lost sheep I was that lost sheep you were too if you've been saved by God's grace today praise the Lord but can you imagine can you imagine a place and all there is is loving people I know you love Christians when you're around them because they've got something different than the world of people. But can you imagine not running across a sour apple in the bunch? Can you imagine not having to run into somebody who has a bad attitude? Can you imagine getting to heaven and just being able to enjoy every person that you are around? Woo! And then the reason heaven will be so great because Jesus will be there. We'll just be living off his love, won't we? We won't need any more. We won't need anything else. Amen. He's all I need. How about you? Again, no sin, no Satan, no selfishness. Think about hell just a minute, just the opposite place. You know why it will be hell? Because there will be a lack of God's love. There will not be a presence of God anywhere to be found. 
See, preacher, I have some doubts. I have some questions. I have uh, basically some, uh, some real strong doubt that I'll go to heaven. I'd get it settled this morning. Oh, yeah. I sure would. So wherever hell is, I believe, I believe the scriptures, and it, I believe what it says, it's in the core of the earth. That's where God says it is. And it will be hell because there is no love. You know why there's no love? Because Satan and his angels are there. How does a person get there, preacher? This is what you have to do in order to go to hell. Nothing. Just stay like you are. Keep going like you are. I'm a pretty good person. Do you get to heaven because you're a pretty good person? That's not what the scripture says. Do you get to heaven because you're living a moral life, a decent life? You're a good old boy down here in the south? No. Are, are you going to heaven because your parents were Christians? You was raised in a Christian home. You heard about the love of God. It better be more personal than that. Amen? It better be because there's, there was a day, there was an hour, there was a time and place when you accepted Christ into your life and he became your Savior. Amen? This Wednesday evening, my, one of my best friends on this earth, if not my best friend, will be preaching for you. I encourage you to come out Wednesday night. Believe it or not, in that ice storm, we had about 40 people gathered around it, down here in the front on, on Wednesday evening. We had a little good time Bible study, didn't we, Brother Bob? But you just hadn't lived till you heard Brother Mac Harrison. He reminds me, if we had Lester Roloff alive today, he reminds me of Evangelist Lester Roloff. How many's ever heard him on the radio? You will love Brother Mac. He's humble, but yet, and meek, and you meet him outside the pulpit, he's just like a teddy bear. He loves everybody. But something happens when he gets up behind the pulpit. I can't explain it. He turns into a different man. <laughs> He, he, he may preach uh, meek. He may preach uh, quietly. He may have a Bible study. I don't know what he'll do, but I have seen him in full form. Amen. Praise the Lord. I want you to come back for that. We'll be having church, Lord willing, in Fredericksburg, Virginia. Would you pray for us? All right. Now, the question is today, if we are the recipients of God's grace, I'm trying to hurry. Believe me, I want to be in hurry. <laughs> All right, listen to this now. The scripture says to go in the highways and the hedges and compel people to come in. He said go to the pool, the poor, the halt, the main, the blind, the deaf, the dumb. We are as recipients of the grace of God responsible to give this love and grace to these who have never heard. And so many who have not heard. I'm so thankful for our church that we go after everybody. Are you listening? I love Temple Baptist Church because we're a soul winning church. And we love the souls of men. What would Jesus do? You think he'd love everybody? Or you think he would just be kind of partial and prejudiced? And just have a select group that he wants. Just a certain group or a certain race and that's it. Not my Jesus. For God so loved the world. And when it says he so loved us, that means there's no words to describe the love that he has for us. And so he just put so love. I'm thankful that he so loved me. I love my Lord this morning. <laughs> he so loved me. Lastly, if you're not saved, can I tell you there's not going to be a party for you? I hear a lot of people say, well, when I get to hell, all my buddies will be there and we're going to strike up a band. We're going to have a party and roll out the keg. You ever heard that? Where do they get that from? Can I tell you, there's not going to be a party, there's not going to be a banquet and a social and a parade like for us when we get to heaven. The Bible says there, there's weeping and gnashing of teeth, and it's outer darkness. Scripture talks about a lake of fire. Those whose names are not found written in the book of life will be cast into the lake of fire. I know about this love of God. I don't know fully. I can't comprehend fully this love of God. But I don't want to ever think about there being a place where I would live where I would not know the love of God. And if I were you this morning and I was unsure about my salvation, I wouldn't, look, I, I wouldn't go to hell for not one person in this room because I thought what people might think about me by getting up out of my seat and coming and trusting Christ as my personal Savior. I'm not going to hell for nobody. I heard one man put it this way. I'm not stoking fire for the devil for nobody. Amen. 
<laughs> Satan has lied to you. He's deceived you. Why don't we as Christians show people our love enough that they would want to have what we have? Mahatma Gandhi said this in India. He said, I'd be a Christian if it weren't for the Christians. He believed the doctrine. He believed that Jesus was who he said he was. Because of the attitudes, because of the behavior of Christians, he chose rather not to do it. Don't that put a blemish and don't that put a mark on uh, our Christian life? And when someone falls into sin, hey, let's not kick those dear people when they're down. They need a helping hand up. This should be a heavenly hospital. We shouldn't be Pharisees down here. We shouldn't be people who have condescending spirits that we're better than you kind of attitude. We're to consider ourselves lest we also be tempted and fall. Now what the scripture says? We're to have love for people. Did not God have love for us in our sinful condition? Brother Matt says amen right there. Now all we have today, if you're saved by God's grace, is we have the love of God to look forward to. You may not be able to feel it. You may not be able to sense it. You may not understand that it's there. But I promise you, there's a better day a-coming. A better day a-coming. There's a great day a-coming by and by. When the saints and the sinners shall be parted right and left. Are you ready for that day to come? Amen? It's going to happen just like God says. And so uh, the thought is this morning, why is our nation going to hell in a handbasket? Garbage in, garbage out. They don't know about the love of God. They've not heard about the love of God in so long. They don't have anything to jar their conscience. They don't have anything to wake them up spiritually. They have no one to remind them. The pastor's duty is to encourage one another. We're to encourage you as children of God and to provoke you to love and to good works. That's the agape love. I'm to encourage you to go out and win rescue from sin. Day's almost done. Low sinks the sun. Souls are dying. Men are crying, win the lost at any cost. Oh, listen, our concern for others, it should be stronger every day. Now, if you're not saved here this morning, do know this church loves you. Do know that this pastor here is pleading with you today to get saved before it's too late. Here's a good term, repent or perish. Thank you, my brother. The Bible says, Be not deceived, God is not mocked, for whatsoever a man soweth, that shall he also reap. Amen. Psalm number 7, verse number 11, the Bible says, God judgeth the righteous, that's the saved, and God is angry with the sinner or the wicked man or the lost man every day. In other words, until you get saved, you have the wrath of God to look forward to, not the love of God. I want the love of God for you, and everybody here does, and Jesus does. He's not willing that any should perish. That's why he came and hung and bled on the cross of Calvary. Psalm 9 and verse number 17, the wicked shall be turned into hell, and all nations that forget God. That's your home if you're not saved today. There is no love there. There is no God there. There is no chance. There's no uh, praying you out or paying you out. There's only two places I find in the Bible. It's heaven or hell. It's you're saved or you're lost. You're either a child of God or you're a child of the devil. And if you're a child of the devil, the works of the devil you will do, John 8, 44. It's your choice. It's God's love or God's wrath. As Brother Skip said, it's smoking or non-smoking. Which do you prefer? So I don't believe all that. Well, you don't believe the Bible. I don't like preaching about the wrath of God. I'm preaching on the love of God. We have nothing to fear. We're saved, born again Christians. Am I right? I'm hell proof. I'm heaven bound. Praise the Lord. I'm enjoying the trip. Wonderful. Isn't God wonderful? Listen to this, John 3, 36. The best part is the first part of this verse. He that believeth on the Son hath everlasting life. Can you shout right there? Amen. And he that believeth not the Son shall not see life, but the wrath of God abideth on him. I can still shout right there because it's not talking about me. Can't scare me with hell. Can't scare me with the judgment of God. I got the love of God coming to me. So many are deceived today and thinking they have the love of God all because they're a good person. Uh, I can find no place in the Bible where it says you go to heaven because you're good. 
But you know, 90% of the churches preach that today, that as long as you're good, as long as you go to church, and as long as you've been baptized, as long as you take of the uh, the Lord's Supper, uh, this is you got to do the seven steps. As long as you do the seven steps or the ten steps, you'll be all right. They've deceived you, and you've deceived yourselves. God says in his word, in John chapter 3 and verse number 3, except a man be born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. That's a spiritual thing. Amen. It's a spiritual new birth the very moment, the very second that God comes and lives in your heart. There's no way in your present state that you can go to heaven like you are. Flesh and blood shall not inherit the kingdom of God. You need more than what you've got right now. Am I right? You, you need God living on the inside. He's willing to come in today. He's willing to save your soul. He's willing to give you this love of God we're talking about. We're going to be learning about all month. Can you invite some friends? Can you show up and act like you're happy about it? Can you smile? I worry about Christians that can't smile, folks. They ain't got the same Holy Spirit that I have. Love, joy, peace, long stuff. Brother Red, it's good, isn't it? <laughs> I'll tell you what. You let God deliver you and save you just right, and you smile. You give a testimony. Let's bow our heads, shall we? Father, thank you. For